Jeff Snyder here for Collider, and I'm sitting down with the team behind Pleasure, which premieres at the Sundance Film Festival this weekend. I'm with writer-director Ninja Tyberg and star Sophia Capel. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for Thank having you. us. So, Ninja, for the folks at home who, who you know haven't seen this movie yet, haven't seen a trailer, tell us you know what it is actually about. Yes, it's a film about a 19-year-old Swedish girl who goes to LA with the ambition of becoming the next big porn star. And uh, we, the film starts when she arrives in LA and we get to follow her on this journey uh, into the porn industry world and discover it um, together with her. And why is it that you wanted to make a movie that looks at the sex industry from the female perspective? Uh, I've been interested in porn as a subject for, uh, yeah, it's actually 20 years now. I'm that old. Um, and I've been interested in the subject for many different reasons. And I started out as an anti-porn activist. Uh, so that was like my first, how the journey began. But then, um, yeah, I've, I've just been dealing with the subject for a very long time. And I think it's, there's so many things, like different reasons uh, why this subject fascinates me. And I mean, one of the reasons is that it is taboo and no one wants to talk about it. Uh, and also I am very interested in gender roles and uh, media images and how that affects uh, our identities. So when it comes to porn, it's really like very like traditional gender roles taken to its most extreme form. Um, and I think it's also, it fascinates me that this medium is so, I mean, they say that 80% of all the traffic on internet is porn. Like people consume like this in insane amount of porn. So of course it's something that really affects us and that is a huge part of our culture, but it's in a world like it exists in a world of shadows. No one wants to talk about it and we don't really uh, acknowledge it like publicly. So that's why I feel like this film really needs it needs to exist and we need to like uh, uh, admit that this is something that exists. And also because I am very interested in uh, power from different angles uh, and, and the porn, traditional heterosexual porn is very, very like male gaze oriented. And that's why I, I felt that it was a perfect example or like a, a perfect arena to make an example of to to like pinpoint that by uh, reversing the gaze uh, because it becomes very like obvious. I, I I thought it was you know interesting seeing the the things that I often see in in pornography from the reverse angle from her perspective. Uh, and, and so Sophia, I wanted to ask you. Um, you know, I, I understand this is your first film, so and, and it's very hard for. So what was the audition process like for you? Well, the audition process, it started out me um, with me talking with a friend that I and Ninja have in common. Um, and he just said that I should try it out. And I think I didn't really realize how big of a project it was uh, when I went there. Because there, when I went there, there was a lot of other girls there waiting. Um, but I had gotten, I think, like two scenes. So I had read. Uh, read a script and tried to practice it but my first audition I was super super nervous and I was shaking and I told Ninja that I was nervous but it went really well um, and then Ninja just told me at the first audition um, that she wanted me back for a callback uh, which at the point I didn't realize was super good um, but then I went back and then I did a couple more before Ninja told me that the part was mine. So you win this role. I mean, what scares you most about it? Like, you know, what, what, what is sort of the biggest challenge in, in your eyes that you have to get your, your head around? I wouldn't say that it, that there's anything with the role that, or like the movie that per se scared me. Like there was a lot of things that were very challenging. Um, but I think that there's a huge difference because um, of course, I needed to have a lot of courage to do this movie because I'm uh, giving a lot of myself. But I think the hardest part was that I am so much alike Bella. 
So sometimes I had trouble keeping them um, separate, knowing who was Sophia and who was Bella. It was hard um, sometimes, but I mean, Bella is a, a great girl, so I don't mind. <laughs> Um, I know you're surrounded here by, you know, almost the entire cast of sort of from the, the porn industry. Uh, Ninja, you know, did can you sort of tell me about coming to L.A., earning the trust of the people in, in this community? And did you ever look at non-porn actors for these roles? Yeah, um, the the end result that it's only uh, like real people playing the part. That was never my ambition or I don't think I dared to like have that it felt like I, I knew that I wanted some people because that's how I've been working before to combine professional actors with more type costed uh, uh, people when uh, when it's something very specific that you want someone who has that lived that experience uh, in order to do it uh, justice but um uh, yeah so we addition wise like I think it was a, it was like just a few weeks before filming starting like shooting that we realized like okay actually this is it's just all <laughs> like because no one else uh, none of the actors that like regular actors that we auditioned they just didn't get the part uh, but it wasn't a decision it was just that how it turned out in the end so something that we realized like oh jesus it's actually only like real people in in playing all the parts um but um because they did it better like it was just much more believable and also i felt that the that was such a difference between like when when auditioning them because i i work a lot with improv uh and they could like the people from the porn world they were able to improvise uh and also in situations where i wasn't entirely sure like i didn't know like 100 percent all the details in the situation but the but I knew that what they are doing is always going to be 100% uh, accurate. Um, so that also, in a way, like was a relief for me as a director that it wasn't all my um, uh, responsibility to like present all the like information and the details in every single aspect of everything. But uh, the, the way I earned their trust was it took a long time. The first time I went to LA was in. Um, 2014 so it was like it, during this uh, research period were like four years uh, um, and um, it was just like slowly like step by step like meeting one person interviewing them uh, and I had a very open mind and I told them like I have so many um, like uh, what do you call it Fadoma Sofia help me <laughs> Pre <laughs> Pre Pre-assumptions, prejudice. Yeah. prejudice, yeah, prejudice. Um, and um, so, and I was honest with that, like, I, I don't know this world, uh, and but I, I want to learn and I want to know the, the authentic side of it. And uh, then I, I, felt, I think they felt that I was honest uh, in my ambition of really getting to know them. And so step by step, like one person introduced me to the next one and then after a while it didn't take me that long to get access to to shoots to be able to come and visit porn sets and then there were just several people there that I could just like talk to and it was easier at first like I didn't go to like the famous porn stars at the, at the beginning and like uh, trying to connect with them but to like the crew members and people that normally aren't used to like people will like chasing them and wanting to hear or interview them. So for them, um, like just, yeah, crew members, uh, they like, yeah, they weren't used to someone paying them that much interest. Uh, sure. So that was a good way to start. And then after a while, like after, after spending so much time there, uh, after, after a while, everybody just got used to me and just saw me as a part of their community, I think. Um, Sophia, I wanted to ask about the, the rough sex scene that comes in about halfway through the film. Uh, yeah. Can you talk to me about, about, about like blocking that scene out with, with your co-stars and sort of, you know, what, what the three of you or four of you did to, to make you feel comfortable and safe? Yeah, um, well, first of all, we started blocking that scene 
I think a couple weeks prior to even starting starting to shoot the movie. Um, with the actor who's Bill Bailey, he's the blonde guy. Um, and we started like walking out from which positions that they could move you easily, um, while at the same time it looking really, really rough without it actually hurting me. Um, and then we practiced like being pulled by the hair because there's a couple of tricks that you do. So it really doesn't hurt you, but it looks horrible or like horrifying. Um, and then the day we shot that scene, um, we did basically the same procedure. We started blocking out what positions that I could move from. And um, we had like, uh, I'll go through what, like what things I could do to um, ease, like from getting, if I was strangled or choked, I could put my fingers and that would help a lot. Or I would uh, really, really like, um, I don't know how to say like tense my body so that my head or my face would turn really, really red. And that looks really scary without it actually being scary. Um, but most of it was also like talking um, and putting very clear boundaries of how far I was willing to go and how far I would let them go and a lot of practicing and with uh, between each take um, they would um, like kiss me on the forehead and give me hugs and tell me nice things um, to also like remind like the, the psychological part of it um, to be reminded that it's not for real and that they actually care about me and that these, that all of these guys who are in this scene are people I really, really trust. Um, because that was something that me and Ninja discussed a long time before us even starting, us even starting to shoot the movie, um, which um, guys that I would trust doing that scene with, because that was really important to me. Um, so th there was a lot of discussion and talking and trying and testing uh, before we did it. Um, and I think that Ninja can vouch for me when I say that us shooting that scene was one of the uh, times when I was the happiest on set. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and I had a super, uh, super rush of adrenaline all day. Um, so it was fun, even though it looks horrifying. Sure. Um, yeah. I think I know the answer to this question, um, but I mean, do you guys, did you have any kind of intimacy coordinator on the set that like, you know, that, that's a sort of position that they would have nowadays in, in a Hollywood movie, but did you have anything, anything no, like that? No, we didn't have that uh, because that didn't, uh, I don't think it existed at that okay. point where I had never heard of uh, the term. Right. It's relatively new. I think I tried to be that function or that tried to do that, like, sure. uh, to do all those steps and like take all those things in consideration. Um, and, um, but I think it's a really good idea. And uh, like looking back at it now, then like maybe, yeah, that would have been a great idea to, to have a person who only had that as their job um, shooting something like this. But, but it, it wasn't, I, I had never heard of it actually when we were talking. So I think it's pretty new. Sure, no, it definitely is, of course. Um, Ninja, you know, can you talk to me about the, you know, the, the opening scene? And, because it kind of sets the tone for the whole thing and it lets you know, like, kind of up front, if you can't handle this, just stop watching now. Did you see that scene as like a litmus test for viewers where like, if you can't handle this and the male nudity and everything, the ejaculate or whatever, uh, you know? Yeah, sort of. Or like, I think that scene for me is every, like the main thing that like, what this film is about or what I wanted to do. Uh, so like a lot of like, um, uh, what's the word, uh, points or, uh, I'm losing the word, but um, yeah, like um, it was very well, like also we did, like I did a, a pilot for, not not the short film, but uh, just the pilot that never what like uh, published uh, like officially, but just mm -hmm. during the uh, financing process, uh, I did a pilot with that scene. So okay. we had already shot it once, and 
it, it's like in a way like the main scene of the film where the main um what's the word i am not finding the word uh like all the power dynamics are on display in that scene. yeah like so it's like i'm 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 saying i'm proving my point in that scene or like this is what this is what i want to say uh here it is uh so it's very well thought and and i felt like okay but if i do this in in this sex scene because there are so many se- or not that many but there are more sex scenes to come but then i don't have to like make the point every time like right. okay i did it once and then we need we're like done with that and we can continue focusing on the story right. because then the other sex scenes have much more uh, they have a, a, um, a, um, a purpose for Bella's journey but it's not like okay look at this now like it's um, yeah what are your expectations in terms of distribution because this is obviously very graphic like I'm just curious you know how where you'd like to see this film land, or and and uh, you know if you're willing to make any cuts to make this more palatable to general audiences. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to, I I'm really praying to all the gods that it's gonna be on theaters. Like that's the that's what we've been promised, but we don't know if they, if they are still gonna be there when uh, when this COVID thing is over. Um, but yeah, so. Um, I think, I mean, it's in, in the US, it's definitely gonna, it's gonna be X-rated and that's gonna limit, uh, of course, uh, have make, but I think usually like if you look historically, like uh, that type of limitations doesn't, uh, like it's not gonna shrink the audience, I think. I think people, it's gonna actually like have the opposite effect that people right. are gonna be more interested. Uh, when it comes to other countries, like Asian countries, for example, like there are a lot of countries where it's just like they just are not going to show it with that type of explicit uh, images. Then, yeah, I'm open to like make some kind of censored cut or like blur blur the penises or something. If that's the only way of getting the film out there, then I think... Yeah, I think I would like in that case rather blur them because cut away uh, is, I think that's not like it's, it feels false. Uh, it feels like it's shying away from telling what the story is. So then I rather have them blurred <laughs> or something. Just or like we were joking about like putting emojis on like a, <laughs> um, you know, a cucumber or something, right. emoji covering the. Um, let, let me ask you this. Would you ever consider selling this movie to a porn website and having it play on their website behind some kind of paywall? Uh, like payroll, I don't know, but for sure, like I don't. Like if Pornhub came in and said, we want to buy this movie and we're going to put it behind a paywall. And so, yes, you know, you have to sure. pay five bucks or whatever to watch it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, uh, I don't love Pornhub uh, okay. as a company. I think they are um, uh, criminals in many ways, but uh, I'm just, every chance to get the film spread is is good then I'm not, i don't know if i want them to make money out of it but if to just use pornhub as a channel that, that uh, was just an example of a, of a website not, yeah. not one i look at um let me ask both of you how do you feel about the way hollywood depicts sex sophia i mean can we start with you not realistic um i would say i mean it, that it's such a hard question because it's really hard for me to define like what sex should or should not be portrayed in movies because it's a spectrum. Like there are people who like stuff that I find terrifying and there are people who don't like any sexual stuff at all. So it's a hard question, but I feel like it's not, that spectrum is not really port- portrayed or sometimes or a lot of times misleading in the way it's portrayed. Because I mean, I had a lot of pre uh, prejudice when I like started with this movie and I was proven wrong in a lot of areas. And most of it is things that I've been taught from movies or TV shows or like the internet in general. So I don't know. I don't think there's a lot of representation of how it's really like, or, yeah. 
I mean, you're not really allowed to show explicit sex in Hollywood. Uh, and that makes it, you know, you know, you see something under the blanket or the way like sex scenes are shot is very, uh, first of all, one dimensional. And then of course, like Hollywood isn't really <laughs> that much better than uh, like Pornhub when it comes to the male gaze. So it's still, everything is still very one dimensional, uh, I would say. And um I, I mean, I'm a sex positive person in the sense that I think that sex is a good thing. I don't think it's, that sex is dangerous. I don't think it's that sex is dirty. I think it's a positive and beautiful part of humanity and like connection between people. And it really plays a very important part of our lives. Uh, and I think it's, we're really missing out on in our culture that we are not letting uh, that part of the human life uh, have a bigger platform or be able, like that we're not able to show it and and in an honest way um, so that that we are so afraid of genitals and but it's actually more I mean it's still like we, you're allowed to see naked women uh, in film uh, so uh, it's more like the <laughs> male genitals and especially like erected ones that are that has this like whoa like super forbidden um thing at which yeah but i think we're gonna i hope and i think we're that th that's gonna change in the future okay uh we got about five minutes left so i just have a few more questions um i, I was curious where the name bella cherry came from and then also why it was important to you to have your, your main character be an outsider from sweden you know, as opposed to just, you know, an average American girl. Um, I mean, I think the the boring and simple answer to that is just because I'm Swedish. So uh -huh. um, I don't, it just felt like the natural, I think for me to be, be able to tell her story and be honest with her, to relate to the character, uh, because that was something that I really discovered while when spending that much time in the US that even if we in Sweden, we are so influenced influenced by American culture. So I, I thought that we are like almost the same, but I just realized like the cultural differences between like everything and th they are huge. So I like, it's taken me so long to be able to really relate to and understand uh, like American people uh, because yeah. So I felt like my main character, she has to be Swedish uh, for me to be able to <laughs> tell her story. But it also makes sense that she, I mean, Sweden, when it comes to these questions, like issues, we are very extreme in many ways and we're considered like the most uh, equally, how do you say, equal country in the world when it comes to men and women. So it, I think it also made like sense for her to be Swedish actually. How did you both react when you when you found out that this movie got into Sundance and was also a, a, a Cannes uh, pick? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I was just thrilled because uh, it's a dream coming true. Um, I it it takes place in the U.S. and uh, my main like the the American audience is my main target actually. I'm I'm more eager for the film to be released in in the U.S. and and be spread in the U.S. than in Sweden. So. And, and Sundance is the absolute, like no other platform is as good as Sundance when it comes to that. So I'm super happy. I was super happy both times when Ninja called me, I cried <laughs> um, because like I've, as Ninja has as well, like poured our hearts and souls into this movie. So it means a lot and I'm super proud of me, but I'm also super proud of Ninja. And I'm super excited that the movie hopefully we'll get the recognition that it deserves. And, and uh, what, what's next for, for both of you? What kind of doors are you hoping that this project uh, opens for you? Um, for me, I want to make my next uh, feature in the US. Okay. Um, and Sophia, do you plan to continue acting and, and you, you know, doing that? Uh, I hope so. Uh, I'm keeping all my doors open, um, but yes, I hope so. Okay.
Well, thank you very much for, for joining me on a Sunday morning. I really appreciated the movie. Truly was terrific. Congratulations to you both. Uh, Ninja and Sophia, the team behind Pleasure at Sundance. Thank you. Thank you.